Greg, 2024, I'm so excited about getting an update on Zentech. What's happening right now? Well, Tracy, it's been an absolutely incredible start to the year for us. We have been very, very busy in a number of areas, but specifically in the uh, on our Aptimer platform technology. Late last year, back in December, we assembled a roundtable of industry experts from pharma industry, so leaders in the pharma industry, from consultants to uh, academics. We put together a, a roundtable of about 16 to 18 experts and really kicked the tires on our Aptimer platform. We wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything. We were achieving fantastic results uh, with the Aptimers testing them as a potential therapeutic or prophylactic against infectious diseases. But before we were ready to roll this out in a big way to the pharma industry, we wanted to make sure that we dotted all our I's and crossed our T's. The feedback from that round table was nothing short of fantastic. Um, most of the experts couldn't believe that we had achieved what we had achieved in such a short amount of time and that we were the exclusive global partner uh, to McMaster and their technology to bring this technology to market. So with that, we have begun an outreach program in early 2024, where we started reaching out to uh, the pharma industry. Uh, I would say we've reached out to at least eight or 10 of the largest pharma companies in the world. And the feedback has been nothing short of uh, very, very interesting. Uh, there's not a single pharma company that hasn't said they don't have some level of interest in our platform, which is great. Aptimers have been around for the better part of uh, 25, 30 years, but they've really just started to gain some traction again. And as you know, as we put out in our press releases, Dr. Lee and his team at McMaster have done just an incredible job developing their uh, patent pending uh, structures for aptimers that have shown tremendous results in preclinical work that we've done. So we're continuing to build out um, the expertise, uh, our, our, our team, we continue to widen the team. We, we're now starting to socialize it with the pharma industry. And it's an incredibly busy time for pharma. As you may know, the JP Morgan, the largest biotech conference is held the second week of January every year. So the pharma industry is very, very busy looking at new technologies. Now we're in that stream as well. So we're really happy with where we're at. We're continuing to do more testing and we're gonna be expanding our platform uh, to include more indications outside of the infectious disease space, including oncology targets, immunology targets, neurology targets. We'll have more uh, news to announce on that in the coming weeks, but we're really excited with what we have. And it seems like, um, you know, there's just a, a, a huge opportunity for us in this space. Well, speaking of that, I think for those of you out there, Zentech has the exclusive license for Aptimer based platforms, platform technologies, is that correct? From McMaster, that's correct. We we got we, we uh, were able to negotiate an exclusive license to be their commercialization partner for their technology that they've developed. So we've got a twenty year licensing agreement with McMaster to bring this technology to market. It initially started out in a diagnostic context for COVID, but then we took it beyond that. And uh, as our news releases have stated over the past year, we started testing it as a potential therapy against infectious diseases. And we've, we've had nothing short of spectacular results. So we're very excited about it. I know industry, uh, industry is getting excited about it as well. These things take time. However, there's a lot of people that need to touch this. Uh, when you start talking to a pharma entity, there's the gatekeepers, then there's the specialists, then there's the scientists. So there's a number of layers it has to go through. But I can tell you, we've made it through the gatekeeper on a number of different pharma companies, and we're excited to see where this goes. Well, of course, as a result of that, you must be working on a wide range of partnerships and deals. Are there any, any that you would like to highlight today? I, I really won't comment on any specific partnerships or deals, but you can imagine that uh, our team is very, very busy um, wanting to get this 
technology into as many hands as possible, given that we own the, or we, we filed the provisional patents against the aptamers themselves, as well as the structure of the aptamers and the application of the aptamers. So now it's in our best interest to get this into as many hands as possible. And we really truly believe that this could be something that could disrupt the monoclonal antibody market, which is just an absolutely massive market, given that aptamers are effectively a synthetic monoclonal antibody. So we can create an aptamer for almost any target. Uh, monoclonal antibodies are very expensive to produce. They're very effective and they're a proven technology. So I don't want to mislead anybody in that regard. But we do believe that our aptamers can do a lot of the same work that monoclonal antibodies do. And we've actually proven that now with the work we've done with um, our, our partners over at McMaster, that our aptamers performed as well as, if not better than the best monoclonal antibodies on the market. So we can't wait till the uh, to, to continue doing our, our, our testing work in this regard. But can you comment then on your transformations or the evolution of your business development infrastructure to manage the steel flow? Yeah, so we're continuing to use a lot of the same team that we currently had in place at Zentech. We've reallocated resources away from some other uh, projects that we are working on into the Triera space. The nice thing about this is we don't have to build out a full biotech roster. Because we've got the, the, the core technology, we can leverage that. And it's a it's a, it's a digital process to actually create and then print the aptamers. So we can do this very, very efficiently and then make those available to the market. Rather than going in the lab and having to do all that work ourselves, we can make the, the aptamers available to third parties to actually do that testing. Now, that being said, we continue to do some of our own work in the lab at McMaster, but we could literally be chasing a hundred or hundreds of potential targets, and that just wouldn't be efficient from our perspective. So we, that's why we'll make the aptamers available to folks for them to try them and then work on licensing deals and, and, and different structures to, to actually get the, the aptamers into the marketplace. Can you comment on your Zentech uh, HVAC uh, filters and how that's going? I would love to. Our team, our business development team continues to do a tremendous job of getting the, Zen, the Zengard story, the, the Zengard for HVAC story into the marketplace. We continue to do trade shows. We continue to do direct outreach to potential customers, partners, et cetera. And the interest in this product is second to none that I've seen in my time as CEO at Zentech. Not a single group has told us they don't have some level of interest in Zengard. Now, we are waiting for Health Canada approval through the Pesticide Management Regulatory Agency, or PMRA. We submitted our application last year. Uh, it is going through their process. Once that has been approved, then we will be free to sell the product to these end customers. We do have one contract already inked that we announced, but I can tell you we have numerous other parties who have indicated interest in, in buying our product once uh, we do receive Health Canada approval. I won't make any comments in terms of timing because I've learned that lesson a long time ago. We just don't know. It's not in our hands. Health Canada has it. Health Canada has approved this compound for use on surgical masks. We got that approval back in 2021. So it's the same compound just on another product. And we hope to have it later this year and be in the market in a big way at that time. Great. You've done an amazing job at providing an excellent update on why we should all be watching our news flow for Zentech. But what else should we be looking for in the upcoming quarter? Sure. One of the things that I'm probably most excited about outside of the business is just the backdrop for small cap stocks. It seems that the, as we know, we've been in a small cap bear market for over two years. Uh, it was just an absolutely horrible market. That seemed to change at the end of the fourth quarter last year. We're starting to see interest in small caps again, which I think is great for our shareholder base and great for us as a company. And we are putting together as we speak a promotional program to go out and start telling our story in the marketplace again. We'd intentionally pulled back from that because what we were hearing from institution after institution was, 
this all sounds great, but this isn't the environment to take risk in small cap stocks. We're looking for cash flow producing businesses. But now that we're moving into that phase of our development and the fact that the small cap market seems to be coming back to life, it's a great time for us to get out and tell our story. And that's what we're going to be doing. We could not concur with you more, <laughs> more if we tried. So for everyone out there interested in finding out more about Zentech, please go to their website. And Greg, thank you so much for an excellent Zentech update. My pleasure. Thank you, Tracy.